Hello everybody and welcome back to Transformative Teachers. Um, I'm so glad that you're able to join us because uh, British Summer Time started last weekend and I don't know uh, if everybody knows what time it is uh, in the UK at the moment. So you've made it here uh, and I believe Manuela, the clocks changed in Italy last weekend as well, didn't they? Yeah, one hour. We're one more hour ahead, so nothing's changed. In England, it's four o'clock. In Italy, it's five o'clock. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then goodness only knows what time it is uh, for some of the people joining us from all over the world, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, But yes, it's lovely to have a little bit more daylight here. Um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, we need it, don't we? We need it. I love the long evening. <laughs> yes. Yes, it just changes everything. I feel so different. Yeah, 30 p.m. in India. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gosh. Dinner time. It's yeah. lovely. It's lovely to see where everybody is. And somebody's joining us from McDonald's, I see as well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's do a little bit of housekeeping uh, before I introduce Manuela. All right, so today's webinar, as usual, will last for an hour, so we will, we will be done by five o'clock UK time. Uh, this session will be recorded, as always, along with all the slides, and you will receive an email notifying you when the recording is available so that you can watch it again if you wish. Uh, look out also for the link to the Facebook page in the recording, because there's a lot of very useful uh, information and sharing that you can do on the Facebook page and also the future of English language teaching conference uh, is coming up so you will be able to register for updates on that as well so do read your emails carefully because there's a lot of valuable information the conference will be a full day of talks just like today's so your heads will be spinning by the ends of it you'll will be so full of ideas and um, so on your screen you should be able to see my slides myself and Manuela but your video and microphone are off because we have well over a hundred people here so uh, however you can please share your ideas your questions in the chat box um, which we will be looking at as we go through the webinar and if you have any particular questions that you would like Manuela to answer then you can also use the Q&A box and we will discuss those things as much as we can as we go through the webinar Okay, I will stop sharing and introduce Manuela and then hand over. So Manuela is a senior academic for English language at Trinity College in Italy. She's a lecturer at the University of Florence. She's an experienced English language teacher and teacher trainer as well. Uh, so she knows uh, where you're where you're coming from. And she has worked in EFL and continuing professional development for over 25 years in Italy, in the UK and in Switzerland as well. She's an ELT author and she regularly writes for um, English language teaching publications. So you could follow her there. Uh, she's currently researching the role of online storytelling and remote theatre, especially with a focus post pandemic. And I think the effect that that's had, and she's a member of the Society for Storytelling. So today she is going to share her wealth of knowledge and enthusiasm with us and talk about digital storytelling. Okay, Manuela, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, and welcome, uh, everyone. Uh, to, to this uh, webinar. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, how can I say hello in the different languages? Uh, <laughs> so it's uh, Namaste. I saw there's someone from India. Mahaba is Arabic. Uh, hola, hello, ciao. Um, I'm not sure in Romanian. Possibly it's ciao, but I'm not sure. So the world reunited and that's wonderful. And if I've learned to say hello in these languages and tschüss in, in Polish, no, that's German, tschüss. And I, I, knew, I knew Polish as well, but that is because of storytelling and how we connect uh, 
uh, with all the storytellers around the world. So um, it's, it's, it's great for me to be here today. And it, b before I go in um, into the, the presentation, because I know Lucy's going to keep me really <laughs> on track with time, <laughs> um, I just wanted to, um, you know, take the ancient and traditional part of oral storytelling for, for which uh, maybe most of you have met me before. Um, that, that's where um, my passion is in, oral, in, in, in the oral tradition of storytelling, because that's where we collect our memories, we collect our family stories, we make sure that they live on. Um, and, but in today's world, in today's contemporary world, we can't ignore the power, the transformative power of uh, the digital and multimodal literacy um, platforms, um, multimodal platforms that we, we can engage with. So uh, I'm going to start from the traditional, the, the ancient, a bit like how I felt when, when Lucy was telling you how many years I've been doing this. <laughs> so let's start from the ancient. Um, and maybe you're a storyteller yourself, maybe you use storytelling in your teaching practice or in the teacher training room. And I'm sure we, 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 are, we are stories, we are made of stories, we all have stories to tell. I'm sure on your way here to this webinar, there's a little story that you could tell. <laughs> I'm sure I could. <laughs> um, so as in, as in any great work of art, including storytelling, there are three qualities. Now, if, if you teach um, folk tales and if you teach the structure of story, you might get there very quickly. Anybody want to have a go in the chat what these are? I'm, I'm not sure I can see the chat, Lucy, so you, you can read it to me if anybody's not, having an attempt. Not uh, yet. So you want people to say what the three key storytelling yeah. Here, here they, they come, here they come, right, a good plot, a conflict, a beginning, a middle and an end, yeah. suspense, a high point, a setting, a catchy hook, imagination, a punchline at the end. These sound like good stories. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So exactly that. Um, maybe in, I, I'm going to use different words but more, more or less that's what it means if i can close the chat now i'm not sure let's see yeah it's, it's getting in the way of my tab levitas gravitas harmonium um this is of course from the latin um and I'm, I'm, I'm english born born and bred in the northeast of england but and raised in England, but now I've been living for over 20 years. I'm almost 25 years, I think, here in, in beautiful Italy. So gravitas, a serious matter, a problem. Yeah, I think was mentioned in the chat. Levitas, lightness, harmonium. And then at the end, we, we bring everything back to harmony. The, begin tell, the beginning tells the premise, of your story, it sets up the dramatic uh, tension that should hold throughout the story. The middle outline, outlines the conflict along the way, and maybe the, the resolutions, and the end is the destination, revealing a small discovery, a revelation, or maybe an insight. So a good rule of thumb to, to, to keep in mind when, when writing down the narration uh, for, for a digital story is two to three minute mm, video script. Um, and that's about 300 words. Now, if you're teaching in the EFL or if you've used Trinity's exams, the ISC exams, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's a bit above uh, an A2. It's between, I think, a B1 and a B2. Yeah, that's the level of the narrative. 
narrative essays uh, or narratives in, 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 in stories. Um, so it has to be concise. Um, we, we are victims <laughs> of social media. Uh, we know uh, about Instagram and how short yeah, our stories have to be. Um, but this also develops interesting skills, as we'll see later. So I'm going to start with a story. It wouldn't be a storytelling workshop without a story. So, um, yeah, that's my story story. Tell me a story or tell us a story. This is a, a call and response. We often use a call and response in the classroom to, gra uh, to grab their attention. Um, one I use in it, I, I used to use in Italy when I taught in the secondary school was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> they all know that in Italy, <laughs> <laughs> but not not all know that easy peasy lemon squeezy was the advert for um, dishwashing liquid. <laughs> I think it was fairy liquid or something. You're too young, Lucy. You would you would No, 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 I know that. And my two-year-old knows it as well now. I've passed it on. <laughs> okay. So I I call story story. And you call out, tell us a story. Yeah. I, I can't hear you, but I'm sure the vibes are coming from all over the world. I can hear you shouting, tell us a story. <laughs> so of course, uh, you're very bright students today, so I won't, I won't be um, pre-teaching key vocabulary, but you can imagine the key vocabulary that's needed. This is a story that comes all the way from Scotland. And we can have, yeah, we've got all the world here tonight. I wonder if there's anybody who comes from Scotland. Anybody here who comes from Scotland? I, I, I used to live very close, Newcastle upon Tyne, right on the border between Scotland. So, um, yeah, also it's interesting where stories come from. It gets us to travel the world, even if we are sitting in our homes like we are today. So it comes from, from Duncan, Duncan Williamson, who apparently uh, um, claimed to have 2,000 stories in his head. He was a Scottish traveller, and he and I, I I was fortunate enough to meet him at, uh, in Edinburgh at the Fringe, um, and he told this this story. It, uh, it, and so, if you're teaching it to young learners in the ESL or ESL classroom, but even older learners and adults love this story. So you would, if they don't know, you would introduce uh, the the word cat, white cat, black cat, the the witch. The cottage, the witch's cottage, a sandwich, a rocking chair, and the chimney sweep. And what can you see under the chimney sweep? Feet. Let's see who's the first one to type in. I didn't check, but can I a, a stain, soot, soot? Can you can you all hear me all right? I think Manuel, I think that maybe because you're using a an integrated microphone, it's not as clear as let's try this. Oh great. Okay. Let's try this then. Do you want to do a test test? It, it, it. Oh, we've lost you. We can't hear you. <laughs> that yeah. any better? Ah. Is that better? Oh, yes, it is. I think so. I think so. Yes, people are saying they can hear very well. Okay. Yeah, it was we could hear you, but it's it's crystal clear now. Okay, yeah. right. So, you were asking about the chimney sweeps foot. Yeah, soot. Yeah, soot. Soot. 
I, I think Lucy's pronunciation is, is is more is more reliable than mine. So it's <laughs> such. It's such. Is it, Lucy? Such. Well, I mean, who says what's the right pronunciation? You know, I'm from Birmingham. I live in Brighton. I lived in Italy. My accent's all confused. Don't exactly, don't but trust me. Such, such, I think it's um, uh, it depends on the yeah on the, on the also regional accents um, in the UK. So these are our keywords for the story. And now it's story time. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and if you teach online that is very important to remember um, and you can even pin yourself so that students can see your facial expression so once not twice not three times but once upon a time there lived a family this family were cats and they were all black like this cat. Mummy and daddy cat were black, brothers and sister cats were black, and there was one young cat, and she was white. But she didn't know she was white, of course. She thought she was black, like her brothers and sisters. And she grew and grew and she grew into a beautiful adult cat. And eventually she wanted to go off into the wide world and, and find a job. And so she thought and she thought, what can I do? What can I be? Can I be a teacher? That's too much work, isn't it? <laughs> no, better not be a teacher. A father, that's hard work too. No. And she thought and she thought and she thought, Aha, I know what, I'm going to be a witch's cat. And that's what she did. She went to mummy and daddy cat, told, told them, I'm leaving. I'm going to find a job. I'm going to be a witch's cat. Mummy and daddy cat gave the little white cat a big hug and said, be careful and come back and visit now and again. I will, I will, said the little white cat, and off she went, and she walked, and she walked through the forest, through the cities, until she came to a cottage, and it looked exactly like a witch's cottage, so she knocked on the door. You can't hear that knock, because <laughs> I've got this on now. Knock, knock, and the, and the witch opened the window. <laughs> Yes. Oh, hello, Mrs. Witch. Have you got a cat? No, I haven't got a cat. Oh, I can be your cat. What are you? You're a little wee white cat. White cats can't be witches cats. <laughs> and she laughed her away, and the little white cat was sad. But she walked on. She continued, and she walked, and she walked, and she got to the second, a second cottage. I wonder if this is a witch's cottage. And she knocked on the door again. Knock, knock, knock. This time. The door opened uh, and there stood a beautiful witch and the little white cat said, hello, Mrs. Witch, have you got a cat? No, I haven't got a cat. Can I be your cat, Mrs. Witch? Uh, no. Oh, uh, wait. Witch's cats are black. Sorry. <coughs> and shut the door on her face. Oh, the poor little white cat. She was so sad. And now she was getting tired and cold and it was getting dark. She ha had no money and nothing to eat. She was almost crying. And then she saw a chimney sweep sitting 
on the grass behind a cottage. And she walked slowly up to the chimney sweep. The chimney sweep saw this little poor white cat and said, what have you done? What's the matter with you? The little white cat told her, the, told him the story that she, she, she was tired, she had no food, couldn't find a job, so she's got no money. And so the chimney sweep shared his sandwich with a little white cat. So here, have a piece of my sandwich. And immediately the little white cat felt stronger and happier. And so the chimney sweep said, here, have a piece of cake too. And then the little white cat noticed a bag next to the chimney sweep and asked, w what's in your bag? Oh, it's just my suit, soot. <laughs> and so the little white cat put in her paw to begin with. And then she pulled out her paw from the bag. It was black. Oh, so she put in her arm. That was black. Look. And then she put in her leg. And then she jumped in and started dancing up and down and turning around, jumped out of the soup bag and the chimney sweep looked. Oh, dear me. You're all black. You've gone all black. And the little white cat said, am I, am I all black now, Mr. Chimney Soup Sweep? Because I, I need to be black. I want to be a witch's cat. Ah, do you now, said the chimney sweep. Well, it's your lucky day because this is a witch's cottage. She sits round the front. Go, go. She'll be sitting on her chair at the front of the house. So the little black white cat walked very elegantly with her tail up and started purring, swishing her tail through the, the, the witch's legs as the witch was sitting in her rocking chair. Her eyes closed. And the little white cat put her paw on a leg. Excuse me, Mrs. Witch, have you got a cat? And the witch continued to rock on a chair and said, No, I haven't got a cat. Oh, well, I can be your cat. I can be your cat, Mrs. Witch. Of course you can. Come, come, jump on my lap. And that's what the cat did. And the witch started stroking. A beautiful cat. Oh, how beautiful you are. Your, your fur is soft as velvet. The little white cat was a bit worried as she was stroking it. I am so happy. I'm only sad for one thing. You see, my little white cat, the little pretty cat, I'm blind. I can't see you, but I can touch you and I can love you. So can I be your cat, Mrs. Witch? Of course you can, said the witch. And that's how that story ended. <laughs> now, when, when I told a group of children the story, um, I told it in Italy, around Italy. Some accept the story, but some don't like that story. <laughs> and a group of children, I think it was in, in Sicily, uh, decided to change the ending. And that's what they did. And the, the witch started touching her eyes. And after touching the, the soot, which was magic soot, uh, she was touching her eyes and suddenly she could see again. And and um, and when she saw that the little black white cat wasn't black but was white, she decided to keep it. So they wanted a more happy ending. Okay. So how about a time time check? It's twenty five past. Thank you, thank you. So we'll move on very quickly. So the idea is now, how do we transform that story? into 
uh, a digital? And what do the students have to do? So we can work, uh, we can work uh, with the story, what we would normally do, uh, working with the characters, with the setting, we could have them acted out, um, visualize the images, and so that the story becomes theirs. It's very important, and this is also how we develop, um, um, not, not, wrote, not parroting, but learning a concept, yes, and telling it to others. And so they tell each other the story, they may change the ending, like this group of children did. And then they put, I've come back to this question, I'm going to ask you straight after, what does it mean to you? Does digital storytelling might mean even just telling a story online? <laughs> uh, but let's see what this creative group of students came up with, uh, with their teachers. of the little wild cat. One time, there was a little white cat. The little white cat has six brothers and sisters. They are all black, and her mother and father are black. The little white cat doesn't know that she is white. She thinks he is black too. The little white cat grabbed Okay, I, it's the same story, <laughs> so I won't go through it. But the uh, you you can see the development of skills here, um, and they they used pictures. They drew the pictures. They used text, so they're developing their writing skills. They're developing visual and art skills, and um, that they're, they're summarizing because my story was a bit longer than three minutes and so uh, lots of skills are involved in in the in in this and and we'll look at apps later but what i'm trying to get at here is how digital stories really helps to develop all the four skills they're listening to each other they're giving suggestions they're thinking outside the box creative solutions can't get all all that story in what am i going to cut out what am i going to keep so lo lots of lovely, so, lovely skills. So Manuela, there. this was a group of students that, that you taught. So how was it? I was didn't it your teach. students? No, no. I the story was heard by the teacher. She came to we have a series in Italy called Stories with Trinity. And uh, the teacher came and uh, and she was listening in to the, you know, uh, and she took that story and she told it to her students. Mm. And then this this came out as a project. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Uh, and so, so I'll ask you the question, and maybe you can answer very quickly in the chat. What does digital storytelling mean to you? Um, in this case, uh, they used um, they used um, it's a movie maker on. Um, I, I think it, it, it's um, it's called Movie Maker. Yeah, it's on the on, on or mo most computers have it. Um, some some have it also on their phones. Um, of course, the children had to, with the help of the teacher, they had to scan the drawings, upload them. Uh, there was lots of uh, digital skills as well involved, um, and everybody uh, participated with um, with their strengths. So the group of drawers, and then there was a group of writers who were writing the captions a little, uh, and then the, the voices, yeah, the voice. So this was a whole class project to produce this one digital story. So everybody was involved in yeah. their own way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and working at their own pace with the, with, uh, in this case, uh, one could decide we're going to use PowerPoint very low tech <laughs> i would use powerpoint record the powerpoint and then you can add the voice with with uh, voice recorders or or audacity but our students um have no problems uh, you know um using these tools they might have them on their smartphone if they have a phone or a tablet or uh 
at school and we can download, for example, in, in, in schools, I've seen teachers using Voki, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, because you can record the PowerPoint or even on, on a platform like Meet or Zoom, and you, 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 you use pictures on the PowerPoint and you use the voice. Mm. Uh, so so esen essentially you've got just a series of images, whether they've been drawn by the students themselves or whether they are images that are available on a particular app. And then the students record their voice telling the story and that that's your story. So it's a very simple concept, I suppose, and hence teachers yeah. can can use simple apps or, or programs they already know, like PowerPoint or Zoom, to yeah. create them. Very and, accessible, mm -hmm. and it can also it can also be um, you know pictures can be taken from uh, free free copyright free um, websites like Pixabay or FreePic. And you're teaching that that's an important skill to teach them to use free pictures. What what is copyright? Uh, you know, it, these this comes in with the digital literacies that we're teaching children today. And so they're they're very important skills because very often we call them digital natives and they they because they love anything digital. But when it's maybe they can't use PowerPoint or they can't you you know it's it's not always that they can use things uh, to their advantage. They can use games. <laughs> so it's um and, and this is these are all the transversal skills that we are, you know, embedding in the language classroom. But actually what we are trying to get at is to promote their language skills. So mm -hmm. as you said, that there, there is draw images help memorize vocabulary, images help learn a concept, because it might not just be a story, it could be show me how. Uh, the process of photosynthesis through through a story, tell me a story, or the water cycle, and they could have you know the pictures showing the process, the voice who 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 uh, narrates uh, the the various steps, uh, and some captions, um, CLIL projects, uh, but even just sat in science in English, you know, cross curricular interdisciplinary. Um, there's no stopping the creativity of oh, us language teachers. Okay. So, the, so the students could either be telling a retelling a story like you've told, or they could be describing a scientific process, or they could be talking about historical events. I suppose so they could use this kind of yes. collaborative and personal activity. Personal stories. Um, we are now. Um, I'm working on a project where we are collecting stories from grandparents. So that the, these stories don't go lost when when they're not here anymore, and children are are telling their grandparents' stories and using the digital uh, to to document and share them. And kids, Lovely. Nat uh, digital natives love to have an audience. Um, yes, it's important that the teacher gives them a mark and the. Um, but if they know they're doing something for an a wider audience, uh, it's much more motivating and powerful. So perhaps for teachers who are not sure which of these many apps to choose, they could even ask their students because their students may be familiar with these kinds of things oh, already. I, I also I noticed, oh, sorry, Manuela, I just want to mention that in the chat, there's lots of um, ideas of different apps and programs coming up as well. So um, so for everybody here, if, and now AL images, make, it, make a note, <laughs> make a note of these things because there's so many possibilities. So it's essentially just still images and a recorded voice and simple yeah. way to tell a story. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and they write a storyboard. We'll see now with um, with the with, so there are some processes. Uh, yes, this um, link here that you can see, and um, thank you, Luke, for posting posting it in the chat. Um, but Ed Shelf um, is is Joyce Valenza. She 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 runs a blog, and the, there are 132 apps on her blog that you can choose from, and and she gives a, a brief description of all of them. Um, for example, I I, ch I chose. Uh, my my top three. This one is Story Jumper. You might you you might know um, Story Jumper. Um, it's an online website where where students can create, collaborate, and become published authors. Uh, and they uh, they create their digital stories for free. 
And then if they choose, if they want to, they can pay a fee to get the book published uh, in hardback. Um, so you can design characters, outfits, expressions, colors, and voice recordings. QR codes are included um, with the published version. And they collaborate with each other, um, with, peer, uh, with peers on books. Um, and there's also layouts. Um, it's very, it's very user friendly. Um, so that's Story Jumper and Toontastic. <laughs> Have you ever heard, who's heard of that one? Toontastic. Have you ever heard of that one? It's a go, it's a Google create. Yeah, yeah. To, a Twana. <laughs> Twana. Um, so it's a Google Google created app. Um, it's very e it's very easy to use where students create and choose characters that come to life in 3D. Um, they can personalize their characters, they can add narration and, and follow story story map. And the last one I chose was um, book book creator. Um, and again, a web-based resource that allows students to create, read, and publish their digital stories. Uh, individual accounts are free, so you might need to get the parents in involved. Or if your school uh, or district can purchase a subscription, um, you can get you can um, add some educational features as well. Um, yeah, it's a bit more, Book Creator is a bit more complex. You can set up online classroom libraries. There's lots, there's lots to it. Uh, they can record their own voice on this one, um, create students, uh, create stories using um, themes that are provided and templates. So it, it's much more uh, complete. But again, you might not want to use an app. You might want to just use PowerPoint, like I said before. Or, or quick time uh, if you have it on your computer or any, uh, you know, uh, now kids are so, uh, they take two or three photos of their families and they put together a video or a little or TikTok, they, they use anything. So um, yeah, the, the, these apps, you, you will get the slides, uh, uh, Antonia. So the, you will get the link the best is the link because he had just taken a snapshot because I couldn't get all 132 apps there. And Joyce keeps updating it, so it might be 142 now. <laughs> okay, uh, Manuela, just uh, there's a there's a, a question in the in the Q and A here, also asking where uh, teachers can find ideas for the stories. Ah, idea. But story so your black and white cat story. Yeah, yeah. Where did you get that idea from? Well, from? Um, listening to other storytellers. Uh, this is it goes back to how the oral tradition blends with the digital. Uh, or you can get there's a great app. It's called Corey Stories. Maybe look, you can look it up and, and put the link in. It's Corey Stories. See, or it's called Corey Stories, but I haven't got the um, I haven't got it open yet. And, and it actually, the, the, give, there are three spinners. The children spin the who, and you might get a queen, or you might get an old man or a young boy. Then you get the setting, where? Is it on a farm? Is it uh, in, a ca in a castle? Where? And then you get a prop, be an apple, a key, a magic horse. Uh, and then they create the, their own creation, depending on the age as well of your learners. Um, but if you want to, you know, I, I enjoy telling my students stories in English because yeah. it gives them a chance uh, to listen to a story and children will follow the characters, not the vocabulary, because our, sto our brains are wired up for stories. So, and so do, you, do you have a, a favourite few websites that you use to get new stories? Uh, well, there's Nor uh, Story Nori. Uh, and the, the, there's quite a lot. If you look up stories for kids, the, there's quite a lot. But what we come to, um, the, the storytelling cafe, the world world storytelling cafe dot com. 
If you Google that, every Friday uh, night, there are uh, story professional storytellers and they tell stories for children. On a Monday, there's stories for older uh, students. Or on a Sunday night, uh, every 15 days, they have another program. And when your students get good at it, they can go and tell stories on a Tuesday night. So every week, uh, it's based in Marrakesh, but it's on Zoom and the world meets. So your children could meet Indian children, Italians meet Greeks. Yesterday, there were Palestinian children with Greek children. It's, it's a lovely way of sharing and getting ideas for stories. Um, yes. Okay, Manuel, and you've put that one in the chat, haven't you? World Storytelling Cafe. That's in the chat. Great. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, just another time check. We've got 20 minutes. So uh, this this also comes um, from lang languages, but um, digital storytelling allows students to gather and evaluate and what I was saying before, synthesize the information and, 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 and creatively uh, present that in, information in ways that are more meaningful for them um, and demonstrate their skills. Um, and this, uh, it's not about the tools, it is the skills that we're developing. So use the tools you feel comfortable with or that you know your students can easily manage on their own um, because it's really about the the project, the what what comes out of it. Um, we haven't got time today, but uh, for example, I follow a group of Palestinian children, and they um, they described um, the life of uh, of Palestinians in in the, in the Gaza Strip, uh, and and with, with pictures drawn by fifth and sixth graders and the voice, the, the different voices and sounds. There, there was an ambulance and so you heard the ambulance sound because you can download, um, like you can download free pictures, you can download free music. If you, if you Google uh, free music or sounds, free sounds, free, copyright free sounds, uh, you'll get quite a few of, um, of these. So the, uh, in my abstract, I told you that uh, I would disclose the seven elements of uh, storytelling and he here they are um, they come from the digital storytelling center uh, and and these are the actual steps that that the digital storytelling center has come up so you start with a point of view or a story as as, um, as we said and and a dramatic a dramatic question uh, or, or a rhetorical question, depending on the story or on the concept that you're presenting. Some emotional content, um, someone mentioned it at the beginning. Um, if you start with um, emotions are so much part of us being human, and um, they, they, they help to connect with who you've got in front of you immediately. And, and you're teaching them these skills because later in life, they will need to to, to talk in front of an audience, a small or large audience, we don't know, but they will have to present. And being able to tell a story around a product or, 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 a, or, a, or a corporate uh, story, you know, storytelling uh, session, they, they, they will have acquired um, the various steps. Pa the power of music, but the gift of your voice is more important. Um, if you can't find the music, uh, our voice I, I use yeah we can use our voice also to make screeching noises swish swish and um, one of the 21st century skills and I think the skills that we can't live without uh, according to Sir Ken Robinson creativity is a human thing it's, it's part of us being human it's what makes us human uh, and so uh, let that flow and Maras interestingly she, um, she has um, developed these uh, eight steps to, to digital storytelling, so which helped me when, uh, and are still helping me because I, I, I am still learning and I'm learning with my students <laughs> what, what, um, what, what, how to get started. 
so and in fact the the one of the questions that you asked lucy was exactly that where do i get ideas from so let's come up with ideas your students are, are that they're your resource they have lots of ideas it could be even a funny story that happened to them on holiday and uh, you know and they come up with that proposal um they, it could be content it could be clear content it could be uh, history as, as uh, Lucy, Lucy mentioned a family story anything research explore learn more about it then write a script or a storyboard have a plan and and then there's the creative bit where you 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 gather the images the pictures the audio the video and then you put that and then you put it all together by magic and step seven, share. That's important. Share. Share it to the world. Let the world know your story. Um, I, I, I'm, there are people who haven't collected their family stories and now, you know, they're, they're gone. Uh, and so it's, it's very important to start collecting memories, collecting stories and then being able to tell them and to put them on a digital support. Feedback and reflect what, you know, that's always very important, uh, what they enjoyed, what they didn't enjoy, what they want to get better at. Um, and, and the fact, if you tell a story in the classroom, like I did just now, um, unless I go back and watch this video because it's being recorded, I won't see my performance. I won't. I, will, I, will, I won't be able to, 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 to see it as a, you know, at, at a distance. And so I can only get feedback from my peers. But being able to listen to your voice, watch what you've done, go back, correct it, make amendments, that is all part of the learning process. Uh, and all those repetitions that we need as students to do so that they absorb the language, but um, we're doing it in a context in a context, in a project that is motivating, and it's not just drilling in, in, in the classroom. Mm. So Manuela, we've got 15 minutes, and I think you've got some lesson ideas to share, haven't yeah. you? Exactly that. They're, now, they come from traditional creative ideas, but they're, they're um, traditional creative ideas. Uh, and the idea is that we can transform them with using digital using the digital uh, skills and abilities that each one of us has without you know um feeding in any specific app or specific technique so um we've talked about the motivation you can see i think you can see how it can motivate uh, a group of learners and um and it encourages them to take risks with the language they're going to try because they can listen to before somebody hears it they can go back and uh, edit and um, replace and change and then it acts as a memory aid what that's what i've just said um and also you're building the learner's identity if they're telling personal or family stories in 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 you know there's this thing that we all have different identities but when i speak italian apparently my voice changes uh, i was lucky enough to be born bilingual so so you know i also have the culture <laughs> but um it, it's uh, you know the, the the recommendations is to hone in on our plurilingual repertoire and um language identity well it depends uh, antonio is asking how how long it could take one lesson or seven lessons it depends how big the project is um i think the little white cat um it took a long time to do the drawings it took a long time to prepare but the act of putting it all together was, was very uh, limited time and seven-year-olds can upload their drawings their pictures and you know it can be just a hello hello goodbye story or what's the weather like today? Um, it could be a day in the playground, very, very easy things. And in here are, are some ideas. Um, so there are, there are four ideas. One comes from a very ancient guy, 
more older than me, uh, <laughs> Hemingway. And actually, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the six word stories, but it, that it comes from the story that Ernest Hemingway had a, uh, a bet, uh, his friends did a bet with him. I bet you can't write a six word story. And they were in a restaurant and he wrote the, the story there, you see it on a napkin. And it's become, it's become famous. So if you had any doubt who invented Instagram, you know who the guy was. <laughs> and so then, you know, you get your students, give them a picture, maybe, or tell them, find a picture, something that you like on, your, on their phone, or they can go on, on the interactive whiteboard, select uh, a beautiful picture, something that represents beauty to them, and then write a six-word story. Mm -hmm. um, or you, you may have heard of the Japanese um, three-line poem. Um, anything that gives constraint will actually give a, a sense of, um, will push students to be creative. Uh, and so that's where the, that's why the constraint comes in. And again, now this is a traditional little ac creative activity you can do in the classroom, but look at Mora's um, seven steps and transform it into digital. And you'll see how, how they will develop more. For younger learners, you, mu you might want to scaffold that. They might need some, some chunks or they might not have, or they might not remember the order uh, of a sentence, but you could give them a picture. Um, what's under that bench? Imagine what's under the bench. Um, and, you know, and then create a story or, or, on, on an image like that or, or, or just um, represented by a picture that they have. Um, the, the, you might have um, seen this one as well. Uh, so you uh, grab an object now and any object you have in front of you. I have a, <clears throat> a, a mug, a mug of coffee here. And, um, and then you get them to write. We haven't got time now to do that, but I could get you to write in the chat all the different ways you can think of using a, a mug like this. And, and I think, Manuela, you told me before that the students tend to reach for their phones. So you say that they can't oh, yeah. use a the phone, they have to choose a different object. Yeah, because on your phone, there's so many things you can do. <laughs> it's <that>. too easy. <laughs> uh, so it could be a, a pen or, or you could have some objects in, um, in, in your, you know, teaching bag. Like I usually have a toilet roll um, or, a, or, you know, one of these, Scot we call them Scottex in Italy. They're the big one, the, the kitchen roll. The, the one in the mid, what you could, you know, use as a binocular or you can use as a stick. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the coffee mug, it can be a pen holder, it can be a mosquito catcher, it, all these things can, um, these creative ideas. And, and then you, you, you share, you share those creative activity, uh, ideas. And by sharing, you're brainstorming and, uh, and other ideas generate. We, we know that very well. And again, apply Mara's model so that they can take that object, take a picture of it, uh, upload it on an app or, or on a PowerPoint, then record a story about the object. Um, does this look familiar for the ladies present? <laughs> Multitasking. I, oh, I'm so happy that somebody found out that multitasking is not actually good for you. So, because uh, I'm hopeless at it, but we do tend to multitask a lot. Now, um, here is choose an object uh, and think of, you know, an everyday object. And instead of looking at the, the lady that we might um, relate with, think about the ironing board or the, or the telephone here, because it's, it's, it's an old fashioned telephone or the leash on the dog. Uh, and then uh, you tell the story from the perspective of the object. And again, you're, you're giving them some constraints, some limits, so their, their creativity is being pushed and um, developed. So this, this seems like a really fun kind of activity for kids because they, they love to go into those kinds of worlds. So I can imagine that the ideas come quite easily, do you find? Oh, yes. They're much more creative than us. They have less uh, blocks. 
<laughs> less than a bit, a hand, <laughs> you know, a, a mug could even be one of these um, things that you, you you throw in the air and they become stars and they have all wonderful ideas. And if they don't, uh, especially, you know, in the adolescence phase or uh, teenagers, they tend to be less uh, in that world and they might need a bit more support then brainstorming sessions are a great way um, of doing it and I always try it out on my husband uh, and see what you know if he doesn't come up with any with any ideas or my uh, my nephew try it out with people and see what I so that you have some some uh, ideas also up your sleeve but usually they do come up. We've just got a, f a few minutes uh, left, so would you like yeah, to choose a particular one? Is, uh, one? Uh, dialogue, uh, bringing dialogue to life. Uh, sometimes instead of the usual, you know, Mary and John dialogue, you could have them write, give them a picture uh, of, of two people in, in, in conversation and ask them to write the, the dialogue. But but the the constraint I learned this from Mario Rimbolucri is that the fir the first line has to have six words, the second five. So excuse you know now this one is not excuse me. Uh, so why didn't you go to school? Six yeah, and then the the boy answers uh, with five, four, three, two, one could be okay. <laughs> or oh, cool, whatever that might be. Mm. Oh, they're, they're, um, yes. And again, applying the digital process to it, see what happens. That would be very using bokis or using, you know, to, to come, they could use manga or these Chinese characters and, the, and they're having the dialogue and the voices or the students' voices, and then maybe they're writing captions. So you can see how the skills are being developed all the way through. Um, and they're practicing their language skills, they're, they're learning from each other, they're inquiring, they're being curious, they're maybe asking for, for words that they didn't know or they can't remember. Um, so autonomy and learning. It allows for differentiation because you have um, any, they can work at their own pace. They could be good at drawing or, or they can go and, you know, uh, usually uh, I find that if you tell them, go to this website and find me these five pictures, they, you know, um, they love anything, anything like that. Um, it creates a positive classroom culture because they're collaborating, helping each other uh, for an end product. Or there might be more more products, uh, and so they're working in teams. And it also develops creativity, critical thinking. Um, you know, all those synthesizing, evaluating what to, and, and then creating, which is um, all skills that we 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 tend to teach in the language classroom. And now those soft skills, the transversal skills that any um, student needs nowadays and and then yes provide an audience uh, have the I don't know share it on the school website or share, share the, the story that you saw earlier in, in digital was shared on the Facebook page of the school uh, or on Instagram Twitter wh whatever your, your your school is using um, so Manuela it seems to me that the the two most valuable aspects about digital storytelling. One is that it seems to be a very collaborative and inclusive process to create the story that involves a really wide range of skills. Even as you mentioned before, they're summarizing, they're having to make decisions about what to include and what not. And then because they're able to share it or or at least have a record of it that they can keep, something that they actually create in the world that they can then listen to again or yeah, or yeah. share with other people. It gives that natural motivation, which they maybe wouldn't feel so much if they were just retelling a story to each other face to face in the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And like you say, sometimes it's a say, you know, summary. Oh. <laughs> I think I write a summary. But if they know that it's, the, it's not a summary 
or you know, but you you can only use three hundred words. Then it 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 just gives them that challenge and that it's that creative way of and working together how we're going to do that. Um, and some of these seem really suitable for higher level learners too, because the six word story that's that's quite something. Like that takes a lot of thought. So I can imagine I've I've done fifty word stories with high level students, but I've not done the six word before. So I think you'd be surprised how young young learners have have less limits because they don't look at the accuracy of the language. And so, so you could use it with any, yeah. yeah. So you could use it with kids and adults alike. And it doesn't, you know, it can even be a little poem or. Uh, a chant it doesn't have to be perfect we're not looking we're getting them to feel to, to have that positive attitude at having a go uh, right. and, and being appreciated in what 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 has come out of it so even this mm -hmm. a, a positive culture of of the mistake mistakes are good yeah if you don't make mistakes I can't, I, you know, I would be out of a job. What am I here to teach you for? <laughs> and, mm. and so, you know, trying to not um, in, inhibit them and in correcting through when, when, when they are presenting. Yeah. Or it's about communication things. and, and really yeah. creating yeah. images for each other and creating a feeling rather than having exactly the right word. Yeah. Okay. What you right. said earlier, uh, Lucy, is very interesting because now, now that I've got into this and, um, I think the, there is space, and um, I'm talking. Uh, I've been talking to Letitia Tinganato, who who's uh, um, a, a lady who's researched a lot here in Italy on digital uh, storytelling, mm. and there is lots of scope for also older learners mm. uh, and um, to develop if, if the skills we've discussed to, this evening are all those skills that are you know required in, in an academic setting but also in a, in a job setting you know right great so this relates to, <laughs> to everything so, so, so a, a, a lot of next webinar will be yeah. on digital storytelling for older <laughs> well it seems that we can yes this this has got a lot of possibilities so there's been a lot of um there's been some requests in the chat for the slides but the slides you'll be able to see all of these slides Again in the recording so you'll receive an email from trinity soon when the recording is ready to view and then you can click on that and you will see all of this again you can pause on the slides with all the apps for example and so you can see what the names of the apps are um so uh manuela thank you so much for another very inspiring um, and yet strangely sort of relaxing <laughs> session, sort of sufferific I'm session. getting emotional because look, look at all the beautiful comments are coming through. Thank you. How, how do you do it? That, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So thank <laughs> okay. you so much. Story, and story, tell us a story. That's the call and response. Use that in the classroom.